In this video, I'll show you how to use Material Maker's comments, remote switches and groups to organize your graphs and how they can be used to save and reuse your own uh, custom nodes. We'll finish off uh, the video by creating uh, this custom uh, node and adding it to your uh, library for easy reuse. Uh, we'll be using Material Maker 0.96 in this video. If you're new to Material Maker, I suggest watching my Getting Started video first. So before we go any further, it might be useful to explain um, the difference between the basic node types um, in Material Maker. Um, so we basically have uh, three big categories. We have uh, shader nodes, um, and these are sort of like the the very sort of basic building blocks that do the grunt work in um, in Material Maker. Um, and if we uh, take one of these and um, make them uh, editable in Tools, make selected node editable. Um, and click the little pencil here. You can also use Control W to toggle this. Um, we'll open up this uh, node editor, which uh, where you can um, change the shader code that generates the output. Um, so this is super powerful. Uh, it's quite complicated. Uh, we're not going to cover this in in this tutorial. I'll make a separate one about that. Um, but um, just so you know, if you open up a, a shader node, this is the view you'll get. We are not going to go into it further right now. And next up, we have uh, group nodes or, or subgraphs, um, and these are um, what the name sounds like. Um, I've made one down here, um, for example, um, and you'll see them uh, show up in the hierarchy. So you can uh, you can go into them by clicking here. You can go back out by double clicking on the on the base. You can go into them by clicking in the hierarchy as well, um, and you can also exit back out by going back to parent up here in the right corner um so basically this is the way that you can take a, a a bunch of notes and put them inside a group um and what you'll see is that a lot of the built-in notes uh, in material maker are actually groups so if we take for example a, a blur here um and make it editable and go into it uh, then you'll see we have a uh, a bunch of nodes in here um, and it, it gets handled by an input and an output and you'll see there's a remote in here as well. We'll look more at that in a bit. Um, then lastly we have some special node types. Uh, there's more than this but these are some of them and they very much fall outside these categories. They sort of solve very specific problems, the remote being one of them, the, the comment, the buffer, the switch and some of these cannot become editable at all. Some of them have do something different or special when you edit them. We'll we'll look more at them in a bit. So a really simple way to organize your graph a bit more is to use uh, comments. Um, it's a very simple note. You just add it and you can change its uh, size and its color. Um, fill in uh, text and change its header. Um, and these are just uh, a nice way to sort of, you know, put up a, a little description of what's happening in your graph and uh, this becomes really practical if you have like a bigger graph um, like this one um, where you know you can then describe what's happening in different parts of the graph and it just makes it easier both for yourself and if someone else uh, comes in looking at this um, afterwards what's happening in the different parts of your graph. Okay, and next up we have the remote node, um, which can be used to control parameters in, in other nodes. So um, we have uh, three different ways of doing that. We have the link control, the configurations, and the name parameter. So um, for example, here we have two shape nodes. So what we could do is um, create a, a new link control to connect to the size here. Um, and then we can um, choose to connect another thing to the same um, link control. So we'll connect the size of the uh, the other uh, shape here. So if we look at both of these, now both of them are controlled by the single control here. So that can be really practical and useful in lots of situations. Um, next up we have the configurations. Um, so if we add one of these, um, we have to choose what it'll control and we'll choose this. Um, so what this does is it creates a fold down menu with different settings uh, you can choose between. Um, so right now it's only linked to one thing, but what we can do is we could um, we could link this to uh, all the uh, 
controls in in this curve node, for example. And then we could uh, save this configuration. So we say add configuration, we'll call it happy. Um, and you can see now we have uh, one thing on the fold down menu. Then if we, uh, if we change the layout here, we'll call this uh, neutral. And we can change it again. We can call it sad. Then suddenly we can choose between happy, neutral, and sad, and all these um, settings will keep in, in lockstep. Um, one little cool thing to note about this is that if you just add two configurations and call them um, true and false, this will actually turn into a little uh, checkbox instead of a fold down menu. Okay, and then uh, lastly, we have the name parameter. Um, so the name parameter uh, is a, a bit different. Uh, it's quite practical. What you, what happens is that you can use the name that it gets here. You can set it to whatever you want as well. Um, you can use that in fields on nodes. So for example, if we were to um, use it here, you have to uh, preface with a dollar sign. Um, and we can use it here as well. Uh, then suddenly we can control um, those two uh, with this value. And you might be thinking, oh, why, why would I use that instead of just the link control? Well, the cool thing is that you could, for example, do this. You could multiply one of them with eight. And then they're, you know, both being controlled, but they're, you know, they're different because you can also multiply something when you're using the, um, when you're writing it into the parameter in that, that way. And uh, next up, we have the switch, um, which is used for flow control. Um, so uh, what you can see here is that um, you can control on the switch uh, which inputs will be uh, forwarded to the outputs. Um, so this node is, is editable. So you can choose um, how many outputs um, there'll be. Um, if we only want one, which you often just want, uh, but you can actually make it uh, really big. and um, how many uh, uh, ch choices there'll be. So uh, there'll need to be at least two, but you have loads of them. And then the, the current current choice is also available when you're not editing the node. So uh, if we make a, a small one here, we can <clears throat> make it uh, uneditable again. We can still choose between the, the two options. Um, so if we, for example, input these two different uh, shapes here, and then we'll just use the transform node as, an, um, as a preview, then you can see you can now uh, choose between these two controls with the switch. Um, so this can be really practical in, in more complicated setups. Okay, so let's have a look at node groups in detail here. Um, we'll use the uh, occlusion node as an example here. We'll make it editable and we'll go into it. And what you can see here is that we, um, we have some different nodes and we have a remote that's uh, controlling them and we have um, some inputs and some outputs. Um, so the remote here acts exactly the same way as the remote I showed you before. Um, the only difference really, or if, there, if that's a difference, is that whatever you set up on it will get, um, get shown on the node itself. Um, the inputs, um, they will um, obviously be the inputs that appear on the node and you can choose what, t what type they are um, and what uh, label they'll have on the node and um, and the same with the outputs. Okay, so now that we know how some of this stuff works, let's try and uh, create a group and add it to the user library um, as a reusable uh, node. So um, I'll uh, create a, a wood pattern, uh, which is something I often use in, in my setups when I'm making wood materials. So um, we'll start out with um, an FBM noise with some uh, Perlin noise. We can just set it to uh, something stretched like this um, and a bit uh, lower iterations. Um, and if we run this through a math node and uh, multiply it by 10, this, everything just looks right, but um, then we can run it through um, the frag function. Um, and yeah, if you don't know what the frag function does, it's basically, um, it keeps everything within zero and one, but it's sort of like, yeah, it, it repeats it uh, down in that value. So everything that's 
like uh, 1 1.1 turns into 0 0.1, uh, 2.7 turns into 0 0.7. So it just uh, it turn creates these repeating patterns, and and you know this works quite well for wood. Um, then if we uh, what I'll often do is uh, just uh, run this through a, a colorize at the end because then you can you know uh, you can sort of uh, change the look of it um, with that. So um, this is basically my setup. This is how I want to um, to make my wood. So if we uh, select all these nodes and press uh, Control uh, G, then we jump into a group. We can call that wood. Um, and we can um, then start connecting some of the stuff we want to be able to control. So uh, I want to be able to control both uh, the scale X and the scale Y. Um, and I also want to be able to control the how many layers are. Um, and then it would also be nice if I could actually just control this uh, gradient directly from the node. So we'll also add that end. Um, and we'll just clear that. We don't need a name for that because it's clear that it's the, the gradient. Um, and then we just need to um, to set an, an output for this and connect it to. And if we want a, a label for that, we just need to fill that in in here. Um, and that's basically it. Now we have uh, our wood node. If we go back out, you can see uh, we have this. Sometimes these uh, controls don't start out with quite the right value, so maybe you just have to set them once here. Uh, and we should uh, start having the right thing here. So uh, yeah, so now we have our little wood node, and you can see it. Uh, it even changes when you move it around, um, and you can lock it like you can with with other nodes um, because it's basically forwarding the the randomness from the FBM to be controlled here. Um, so yeah, we're happy with our little node. Uh, so let's uh, add it into the user library. So we'll go in tools, add selected uh, node to library, and we'll say user library. And then you can just write the name you want it to have uh, in the library. Um, if you want it to be inside a folder, um, for example, maybe we want this to be inside a pattern, then you can just write it like uh, in the in the path here. So we want it to be called wood. We want it to be inside the pattern folder. And if we then open the pattern folder and scroll down, then we have a new node called wood. And we can drag this out as many times as we want. And the default values will be the one that um, you have when you add it in. And the little um, the little thumbnail will be um, what it looks like when you add it in as well. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like covered in my next tutorial, uh, please give me a comment. If you would like to support me in making more videos and in my open source projects like my Godot add-ons, uh, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thanks to my patrons, Alex Ditinski, Elias Eskelinen, Joseph K. Trambone, Oscar Johnson, Winston, Johannes Wunsch, Space J Zero, Dimitri Keen, and Marcus Richter.